So it's a weekend, and you want to make pizza. We can make a nice, authentic Italian pizza dough right in your kitchen with a few simple things. The first thing you need is a digital scale. It's 20 bucks on Amazon. You don't have to get fancy, but you want to make sure to weigh out your flour and your water and your salt. So it's exact every time because hydration is very important. For flour, you want a double zero flour. You can usually find it in the pasta aisle in your major grocery store. Um, it's nice that it's already weighed out 500 grams for you. I usually buy five pound bags from Pennsylvania Macaroni Company in Pittsburgh. I get about 30 pounds at a time because I make a lot of dough. So it's very simple. Um, I have my designer tub and in the tub I have 325 grams of warm water with 15 grams of fine sea salt and an eighth of a teaspoon of yeast. Once everything is dissolved, all you need to do is add your flour to it and you're going to mix it up. And all you want to do really is just incorporate all the flour into the water. And then once we do that, it's going to be, it's going to be wet because this is high hydration. It's about 65%. Once you get all incorporated nice, this is going to be a sloppy looking dough ball. And what we'll do is we'll let it sit for uh, 10 or 15 minutes. And then we'll knead it into a rotor dough ball. Then after two hours, we'll make the individual dough balls. It doesn't take a whole lot of time to make the dough. It's a little bit messy, but it's not as bad. The sodium dough is a lot worse because it's a lot higher hydration. So all you're doing here is just mixing up, trying to get all the flour made into one ball. You kind of squeeze it, pinch it as you're making it so you get everything incorporated. Kind of get away. Doesn't take long. And that's it. Just take all that gooey flour off your fingers. And you can see, all it is is just a messy ball, and that's fine. So we'll throw the lid on loosely. We'll let that sit, like I said, about 15 minutes or so. And then we'll knead it into one larger ball. So we'll be right back. All right, it's been about 15 minutes. It should be long enough. I'm just going to take our messy ball out. I put a little bit of just regular bread flour on the counter. Don't waste your good double zero flour on this. The amount of bread flour you're putting in doesn't matter. I put a little drizzle of olive oil into the tub. And all we're going to do here is going to take about 30 to 45 seconds is we're just going to knead this into a smoother ball. You can see it already. It's already a lot smoother than it was when we took it out. So this step doesn't take very long. It doesn't have to be totally smooth. You just knead it out, rotate it a quarter turn each time. And what we're going to do is after we're done, put it back in the tub, seal it tightly this time. And we're going to let it sit for two hours. After the two hour time, we'll take it out and cut it into three. Now you can make three, four, or five dough balls out of this. Depends how big you want your pizza to be. I make threes. Makes a good, nice size 12 inch pizza or so. Nice and thin. So I'm just going to take this, pull the dough from the outer side towards me. Make it a little bit smoother and tighter. Get all that gloop in there popping. And that's it. We'll put it in the tub. Like I said, let's sit for two hours. And then we'll be back and make the smaller balls. Always clean your flour off if you're making more than one batch of dough. If you get little pieces of dough stuck in here, it'll get hard, and you don't want that in your final dough balls. It's crunchy, nobody likes that. So, we'll be back in two hours. Okay, it's been about two hours. I've taken my dough out of the tub, divided it into three about equal sized balls, about 281 grams each. So now what we're going to do is we're going to make our dough balls that will rise now for at least four hours on a flour surface, covered with flour, wrapped with salt in. Making dough balls is really, really easy. You can do it on the counter, the method I don't really prefer. You just turn, pull the dough, pull towards the center, fold it over, and keep turning until you can feel that the dough ball starts to get tight. When it starts to get tight, then you'll know that it's nice and smooth on the top. 
just like that. As you can see, that took literally, what, 15 seconds or so. I've always done it right, I just hold it in my hand, so I can get a better feel of it. You can tell when it's starting to, start to get tight, nice and elastic, <coughs> instead of doing it on the counter. And again, it doesn't take that long. You can actually feel how it starts to get tighter as you're pulling the bed over. And same thing. So I'm making three pizzas out of my batch of dough. And they'll make between, I don't know how much I stretch them, 12 to 14 inches. Baking the pizza, there's three different ways you can do it. I do suggest buying a pizza steel, as the heat is better off a of steel than it is off of a stone. 550 degrees if you're cooking directly on the pizza steel. It's take about five to six minutes. You will have to use a wooden peel to get the dough off. You have to use flour, semolina, or cornmeal. That starts to get messy. I cook it on parchment paper at 500 degrees. It takes seven to eight minutes, and there's no mess. Um, you can cook it on convection bake, and that will give you the burnt bubbles on the crust like you're using a wood-fired oven. So that's another way you can do it. There are pictures on our website of all the different methods you can go and see what the finished product looks like. So we'll cover these, let them sit for, like I said, at least four hours. They'll probably get set for more like five, and then we'll grade a big pizza tonight. All right, so we have our dough walls and they're ready to go. So different people have different methods of how they like to stretch their dough or shape it. Always do it by hand. You spend all this time making a dough ball and get some gluten in there. It's going to get some nice airy crust. And then you're going to ruin it by using a rolling pin and rolling it out thin. What you do is you kill all the air bubbles in the dough that you took all this time making in there. Oh, you know what make it. The dough just sat still. You know what I mean. So I just stretch mine vertically, see how it's immediately falling down. Like I said, I like to use parchment paper now instead of using flour, semolina, or cornmeal. It's just that easy, see? Now it's ready to have sauce put on it, cheese, toppings. Bake at 500 for 7 to 8 minutes, and then it's done. Um, you will see different people will say that you should heat your pizza steel up in the oven for half an hour, 45 minutes, and I have done that one time and honestly did not really notice much of a difference. So, uh, we're going to make some pizzas. I have a Sicilian one in right now, and when they come out, I'll give you a look to see what they look like. Thanks. All right, the first Neapolitan pizza is out. Fair to Mazel share the finished product. Of course, this is the kids' pizza. They don't like anything on it except the cheese. So that's what it looks like whenever it's all done. If you want it to fall off the board, that would be bad. So hope you enjoyed the video. Make some pizza. Thanks.